welcome back uh, to our little excursion into some one day games to enjoy before season of discovery begins in just a couple of days and we're gonna have another big project to dive into let's get into an fmv game fmv games i think a lot of you dismiss a lot of people do like kind of out of hand they're never overwhelmingly popular they're seen as gimmicky on the right occasion and we usually play one say once every 12 months maybe two in a year's period because there's a lot of them and finding the ones that are really special and great uh is not too hard to do after a lot of people have reviewed them and said okay this one's really good but you have to be in the right mood to enjoy this experience and my review of this is going to be i think you'll be interested in what happens at the end as to how i place this in sort of our category we're going to be playing a game called contradiction as always fmv games and if you're not sure what that means it means these are games that feature actors live interactive actors right so these are people that are filmed like a movie but you usually have a choose your own adventure style of playing and have to figure something out so things that lend itself to it are detective mysteries interviewing people psychiatry doctor's offices anything where you are asking the person questions but the reason i think they don't get overwhelmingly popular is one the acting can sometimes be a bit too intense for some people and people don't like clicking them but more importantly they're inherently limited compared to the level and scope of rpgs certainly that we enjoy in 2024 right is they, they have to be because filming responses with live action is so much more difficult than doing it with just a script right and that's you can see the costumes sets inflection lighting all that kind of stuff that needs to be done when it comes to live action responses is way way harder to do than just have someone in a sound booth with a script that, that can play out a ton of different possibilities like Baldur's gate 3 just played that massive amounts of responses depending on what the character did maybe they arrived here at this point maybe they got here at this point maybe they have some information then maybe sometimes they don't and they can give you lots of variation on what they can say. That's infinitely harder when it comes to live action stuff. How did Contradiction get around it? What is the game? All right, so Contradiction, we're going to be going to a small town, a small UK village where somebody has died, seemingly a suicide, and we're the police investigator to figure out, was it a suicide? That's kind of the premise of the game. And we're talking a population seemingly of about 12 people live in this village, and we're going to move around in a very Google Maps fashion where you can literally traverse down the roads uh, and visit, like, the, the local lake, a weird house, the houses in the town, the pub, the restaurant, things like that where we're going to meet people, like the landlady of the pub, or we're going to meet this um, person who lives kind of out in a greenhouse and doing all these kind of things and try and find out information as to how they're all linked together. And one of the glorious parts about this game is that they are all linked together in some way. Everybody knows each other, which is a very UK village thing. It's like there's nobody mysterious within this village, although their character is mysterious. But if you say the name, it's like, yeah, we know exactly who that is and what they do. And everybody's up to something because it's essentially a whodunit. Who out of all these people is responsible for the death? Who caused it? And everybody's doing something entirely bizarre, which I really liked. Let me do the pros of what I enjoyed about Contradiction. The actors really ham it up, which is great. Because, as I said, if you play an FMV game and everyone's taking it too seriously, it can feel a bit like you're watching a TV show and you don't really have much involvement. Whereas, if they're hamming it up, it feels more gamey. Like, the characters are, are absurd. They're really absurd. Not to the point where they're, like, literally clowns in makeup, but the way they play them is, is funny. And you can really immediately, and I think this is important, get an idea of what they're going for these are obviously good actors who are playing it in a certain way in order to get a reaction out of you if someone's supposed to be a slime ball and really greasy you know it within like two seconds and it's really over the top if someone's supposed to be a complete waste of life essentially and total uh total degenerate you can tell immediately that's what they're supposed to be if they're supposed to be creepy and weird you get that vibe very very quickly if someone's earnest and honest uh and trying to find out the best that fact that works out really well and the actors are so hammy that even later in the game and you're only going to play for maybe six hours is that they're still making you laugh and you very quickly similar to papers please is you get that association of that oh god we've got to go talk to that guy oh my god this guy like creeps me out <laughs> well okay maybe this guy will be the king and, and you know when you go and visit them is that you're going to get a certain type of character and you kind of look forward to going to see them and that makes it really good i like it a lot how does it get past the limitations 
of... Uh, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention there, is that the story gets gradually more absurd. And that's required. And again, that reminded me of Return of the Old Din, is that you have this very sort of normal-ish premise of a ghost ship that's returned to port. Do you expect that to turn into Krakens attacking and weird crab monsters ridden by the Nazgul? No, but that's where that game goes and you're like, okay, this is just constantly scaling things up, which is in a video game is what you want. You want that to happen. You don't really want it too based in reality because it can just be kind of dark, macabre, and miserable. You want it to keep and upping the ante and making you go, what? What is happening here? Like, you have that response, and this game does that in spades. Super good. Let's talk about some of the cons, though. It is limited, and the way they got around it was pretty clever. The game is called Contradiction. What you can't do, again, based on the limited amount of responses they can film for people, especially because it's probably done on a relatively low budget, is ask about things you found out from another person. The nature of the game is that you can quiz people about their own personal testimony. So when you visit a person, you will have a log of the things they have told you directly from their mouth, and you have to use the knowledge you've acquired elsewhere, or evidence that you've acquired, to say, hang on, there's a contradiction. Because here you told me this, and that can be something very simple, like, I wasn't there on Friday, and then later on, somebody tells you, I remember them being there uh, on Friday. And then you go back and you quiz them a little bit and then they have to tell you, oh yeah, well I remember I visited Paul Friday night. And then you go, oh, but earlier on you said you weren't there Friday, but later on you told me you saw Paul on Friday night. Contradiction. And then the story will continue to advance. We're like, okay, look, this is what really happened. Uh, and and I, I said this because, or maybe, uh, oh, I forgot I actually went on Saturday. And it's like, well, that doesn't work either. Or maybe if you were there on Saturday, then you do know what happened Saturday morning. And you told me earlier, you didn't know what happened Saturday morning. So it's very confined to what that person told you. And that can be a little frustrating at times. It's a, it's a, it's a pro and a con. On the pro side of things, once you get the rules, it's very easy to understand that, okay, this person is lying. I need to figure out a way of getting out of them the real information. And that means that you don't ever get stuck in this game. And that's a big pro because you know this person has more to tell you because of what you found out elsewhere. On top of that, they also have a very easily accessible tip menu. The game doesn't want you to get stuck and frustrated because by the end, certainly you have tons and tons and tons of dialogue uh, that you can choose from. You might have something like 50 options to find the contradiction. So the game will say, hey, you haven't gone and spoken to X yet. More importantly, you can regularly call the chief, right? Because you're the police inspector in the village is you can call the police station and the chief will say, okay, run me through what's happened since we last spoke. I tell you what, I think that that story that that guy told you doesn't add up, right? And it's done in a very conversational way, so it doesn't feel absurd, but it's also pointing you as like, that, there's something over there. There's a contradiction with that guy that you haven't found yet. Uh, so maybe go and revisit that and have a think about that. And uh, we never got stuck for more than a couple of minutes at any point, which is fantastic. The con of it is the frustration in that you know that somebody has either blatantly lied to you or you have information which would be really fun to explore without spoiling things. It's like, it'd be really fun to tell X what Y just told me because it would just cause World War Three and it would be hilarious. And you can't do that. Won't let you do that because they haven't told you about it. Especially if it's like a secret the other person's keeping from that person. Then obviously the person you're talking to doesn't know about it because it's a secret. Although you do. And you would really, really like to be like, well, I just found this out. And you, you what you want to do and I guess this is a better way of thinking about it, is you want to ask questions, specific questions. And you can't do that. What you can do is present evidence and say, what about this? So that might be something like a bag. What do you know about this bag with this logo on, right? So you found the bag, you asked them about the bag, and that's how you propose questions. What you can't do is be like, well, Timmy just told me X. What do you think about that? Can't do that. And it works within the realm of the game, and it makes sense to avoid infinite amounts of responses and things that would needed to make the game disjointed and i think there would be generally more frustration if you did you were able to like propose more questions but there was dead ends and things that just didn't fit into it that would be more frustration if they'd given you the option to do that within that sphere and you couldn't explore them all and that's even more annoying than being like no this is the limitations of the game is you must deal with their dialogue now that might sound frustrating but honestly it works really well 
because all the dialogue makes sense and you do have those aha i got you moments and you have them pretty regularly alongside this absurd story now uh, to give it my final sort of review, because I've explained the game, I, enjoy I enjoyed the hell out of this, as did my stream. I had a great, great time with this. I had so much fun. Uh, we were laughing all the way through it. We hated certain people. We loved certain people, which is what you want. However, I'm really not sure I would have had that same experience playing it with outside of a stream environment. It's so cool when you have so many people who are on board with it and making jokes about the people, having fun declaring people kings uh or the slime ball is the rizzler he's got so much riz because he's doing all this and all this kind of stuff that is so fun and so engaging and i tried to put myself in the mind the, the mindset of like what if i just bought this at home and i was playing it on my own i almost guarantee i would not have had as much fun and that's something to bear in mind and the reason for that is it's a community experience and if you can these are games i think are almost best enjoyed at a group setting or a party with friends who are into video games where you could almost play on a tv in a living room and you could sit down with one person having the controller and there's a few of you and you can play through it as a single player experience i think it's probably diminished because it's not got the depth that a video game that sucks you in has it doesn't have that uh, and that's a real shame but as a community almost like a party game it works really well and it does remind me of say super seducer right super seducer if you're not aware uh, is another fmv game where this absolute cringe slime lord um was trying to teach dating tips but clearly it's awful in every single way and therefore it's funny as a group to enjoy just how bad and cringe it is like and then that played up to the into absurdity with like super seducer 2 and then it got really bad i, I actually haven't played it because it got banned from Twitch and Steam. I think Steam took Super Seducer 3 down because it started and edging into like being overtly sexual, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but for whatever reason, it went too far. And it was no longer something we could play in an afternoon. Because we never we were always like, we never want to give this guy money. So what we'll do is we'll buy one copy and we'll stream it to thousands of people. And nobody buy this game, right? Nobody buy That was a different kettle of fish. Contradiction is not that. Contradiction is fun and you can play it and it's awesome and we fully support the devs on this one. That's a different kind of thing. But again, in the similar vein, those games are best enjoyed as a group. Not really you sat there going, oh, oh, uh, uh. In this one, you wouldn't have that response, but you might not get the... Because the game doesn't have the depth of a lot of games of a similar price tag, is you might be like, oh, okay. That was kind of fun right so for me i would rate this game i know some people have been asking me to like put these in a tier list i might talk to bex about this if we can have an ongoing tier list as we play these games like for me as a stream and viewing community experience i would rate this as an a it's not s tier i would rate this as an a this is a really fun group experience where if you get people who are into it and involved they'll have a great time uh, and you'll be along for the ride for a few hours as a solo experience i think it's probably a b uh, which i consider just good it's good it's fine uh c i would be like not good and d is just bad uh you're right so c, you know c for me is like eh it's not very good like it's not terrible it's not like badly designed broken and awful but it's it's not great uh d would be like this is just bad don't touch it so single player uh experience i'd probably rate as a b b low b uh but as a viewing experience if you could if this is something you're looking to play with uh your gamer friends one night it's like hey check this out i think this is an a tier game for sure next game i don't know lots of suggestions coming in from you guys and the team and we do have these occasional days guys um in the streaming world where it's like we have massive projects uh season of discovery starts on thursday can't wait for that uh but then we have like gaps in between like the new poe season might be starting in a couple of days uh whatever dawn trail is coming etc etc uh where we have like a day uh where we don't want to start a game and ha leave it half finished so day day play games are really perfect uh chris has put in like uh, titan falls 2 campaign which you might check out uh there's been a number of suggestions from the rest of the team and the viewers uh about these one day games it's like you should check this out it's a great uh, it's a great day game so any suggestions like that leave them there and i'm sure bex will uh have a little skim through and see what you guys have to say all right so i'll see you tomorrow because we've got one or two more day games to go before we enter into the season of discovery season two bye everybody